So microlearning is most effective when it's short and focused on one objective. Okay, so that's what's really key, and that's kind of what distinguishes microlearning from other forms of uh, learning solutions. They're short and focused on one objective. They're short and focused on one objective. So to help focus the function of microlearning, we start with clarifying the desired organizational results. This is always the first stake we put in the ground. It's how we establish alignment through our design, development, and delivery process to make sure our solutions add value to the organization. And I just find that uh, stakeholders really appreciate this conversation, you know, when we talk to them about those desired organizational results. What does this mean to the organization? What does this mean to the business? And then now we start to align everything else we do to help drive those organizational results. So we take the results, we translate those to desired performance. And that really means what people have to be able to do to achieve the result. The result. We then select and focus on the performance. And we really are looking for that performance-based objective. And that performance-based objective is characterized by an action verb, something that they are actually doing as part of their job and their job responsibilities. And of course, it's important to consider the conditions under which performance must take place. Okay, so we have our objective, what are the conditions around it, uh, such as their environment, uh, and you know, is it noisy, is it busy, um, is it is it uh, face to face, is it uh, over the phone, you know, what is their environment like, we take that into consideration and uh, whether or not they have available tools and resources that they use, you know, such as a software system or a quick reference, uh, they have those available to you when they're performing those tasks. And of course, we need to have our criteria for performance, the standards, and that's really how we are clear about their proficiency, how well they perform. And that brings us, you know, right through our instructional strategies. So if that sounds familiar, that's good because we focus on the objective, we understand what the conditions are, the criteria, and what instructional strategies really make sense given that objective and the content. Then we determine what shape our micro learning can take, essentially how we're configuring the learning experience or packaging the learning experience. And often we can, you know, have our objectives and our content and our instructional strategies, and we can configure them in more than one way. You know, we can create a flashcard out of it. We can create a quiz or a challenge out of it. We can create a game out of it. So it's really important to follow this path so that we're driving the desired results, we're clear about the performance, for micro-learning, we're zeroing in on one objective, and then we choose our form. Form always follows function. So what I'd like to do is share three micro-learning examples with you, um, and essentially how those were put together, how I looked at the desired result, desired results, the appropriate type of micro-learning, balancing form and function, and how we you know, embed those micro-learning assets in an array um, as part of our overall